Hi, I'm James Ligasaw, the board chairman of United Power. And I'm John Parker, the chief executive officer. I'd like to welcome you to the 80th annual meeting for United Power. We're over at our new satellite building in the northwest corner of our service area. It's off of the I-25 frontage road uh, just outside of Firestone. Well, let's go inside, take a look at the building, and then we'll talk about some of the things we got accomplished in 2018. Sounds good. So, John, here we are in the new building. This sure is impressive. Yeah, we've come a long way since we bought it, uh, and we've already got people operating out of the backyard, uh, taking care of outages for our members. As the, uh, the board looks at the uh, company and its growth, I mean, one of the things that's going on is our fastest growth in, in members is occurring in the West District. Before we got to this building, it took us as, as long as 45 minutes in a line truck to get from Brighton to I-25. And now with this building, we can be on I-25 in five minutes. Right. Wasn't there something on New Year's Eve that uh, just really showed why we're here? Yes, we had an outage that uh, was called in, and uh, our lineman that responded to it lives pretty close to this building, and he was, he was able to get here and get in his truck in less than 10 minutes, be on the road, get to the location where the outage was, and fix it and have it done and completed before he would have even gotten to Brighton to pick up his truck if we didn't have this location. Wow, yep, and that keeps New Year's Eve party going. That's right. John, what's the number one most important thing you think about each day? Uh, it's safety, James. Uh, we work in a in a very dangerous industry with a very dangerous commodity. And what I worry about is safety for our members, but especially for our employees, because they're the guys out there uh, working with it every day. But, but we've made some improvements. We've changed our safety culture and uh, racked up some pretty good statistics. Right now, we are over 660 days without a lost time accident. Wow, that, that's almost two years. So James, what are some of the things that the board gets excited about? Well, <laughs> we get excited about a lot of things, but probably the, the biggest one is, is that when we get calls from our members, you know, as the board, we're here to represent the members. And when, you know, the calls that we get that may be, you know, the biggest one is, hey, my power's out. My power's been blinking for a week. What are you guys doing about that over there? And Part of what we are doing about it is that the, the board's role is to set the budget for the company. And as part of setting the budget for the past couple of years, we've been increasing our maintenance budget to be more proactive uh, in working on the, the maintenance and uh, reducing the outages. Our chief operating officer uh, had the, the, the great idea of let's focus on completely rebuilding our worst performing areas. And that's what we've been doing on for the past couple of years. And it's really made a, a difference in terms of our reliability. In 2018, uh, as a result of that new maintenance process, we were able to reduce our outage hours by 40%. Wow. One of the biggest risks to the company is an electrical caused wildfire in our mountain district. And this is not something that theoretically may happen. We're all aware of wildfires that happen in the mountains. And if you remember back uh, earlier last year, the great big wildfires in California that ended up being attributed to electrical sparks uh, from a power line. And this, this is serious risk. I think it ended up that the power companies out there are going bankrupt because of the damages that were assessed because of these wildfires. So for United Power and what we do to mitigate this risk is we've greatly increased our tree trimming budget to clear our right-of-ways in the mountains. Well, that's right, James. We've increased our budget for right-of-way clearing up in the mountains about 10 times over what it was 10 or 12 years ago. And we've seen some additional benefits to that, not just reduction of risk in uh, of worrying about wildfires, but it's also improved our 
uh, outage record up there. Um, in fact, we had a contingent of folks come out and visit us from Southern Cal Edison uh, late in 2018. They wanted to see what we were up to in terms of uh, fire mitigation and we spent some time talking to them. They spent a day up in our mountain division looking at our, our new uh, overhead Hendrix cable, which is an insulated overhead line, which is not something that, that we normally use, but because it's so good at preventing sparks and it's, and it's really tough, it, it's, even a tree laying on it will not tear it down. So it's helping with the fires and, and with outages. Also a part of the uh, efficiencies of the outages going down, we saw that our overtime costs for the linemen responding to outages went down dramatically as well with the tree trimming and the Hendrix cable. John, let's talk about what's new. I think it's obvious to everybody how much growth is occurring around the front range. Yeah, we've seen a lot of growth at United Power. Uh, in 2018, our, uh, we added 4,200 new meters. Uh, that's about a 5% growth in the number of meters, which is probably 10 times the national median in terms of meter growth. Uh, our revenues were up about 13%. And our uh, peak, uh, our non-coincident peak load uh, exceeded 500 megawatts for the first time. It was up about six or seven percent from 2017. That, that's a lot of work to keep up with that amount of growth. And I think our staff does a really, really good job of being out in front of this and, and uh, staying ahead of things. So I want to say thank you to all of our staff of United Power. Not only is the growth occurring from the new construction along the Front Range, growth is also occurring from United Power has purchased the Town of Frederick Municipal Electric System uh, to add to our, our system. The Town of Frederick has always been within our service territory, but has always operated individually as a municipal uh, power system. Um, it uh, was really a win-win opportunity for the Town of Frederick and United Power to, to do this purchase and bring the Town of Frederick members into the United Power system. And we'd like to take this opportunity to welcome the Town of Frederick members to United Power. The battery storage project is the most exciting thing that we've done at United Power this year. It's about a four megawatt battery utilizing Tesla batteries. And the way that it works is that we charge it in the middle of the night when rates are low and demand is low. And then we release the stored power back onto the system during the peak time about five o'clock in the afternoon on hot sunny days. Not only does this battery storage make environmental sense, it also makes economic sense to our United Power members. We anticipate that we're gonna save almost a million dollars a year by utilizing this battery storage technology just on the differential between the cost of peak electrical rates and the cost of off-peak rates. And we anticipate this project is gonna pay for itself in eight years. As a cooperative, United Power is owned by our members. And from the boardroom on down to the staff, our focus is always on the member at the end of the line. Now, you know, we've talked about you know, how we've been keeping up with the growth that we've been having on a day-to-day -day basis. We've talked about being proactive and, and looking into the future. And one of the biggest concerns that the board has is the status of our power supply. And John, the board has charged you and the staff to approach our power supplier and uh, seek to modify our co long-term contract with them. Well, Jim, we're working with Tri-State, and for those of you that uh, a little fuzzy on what, who Tri-State is, they are our power supplier that we've been buying power from since 1952. They represent about 75% of our costs and we'll spend over $200 million with those folks this year. Uh, so anything we can do to change your arrangement with those guys should soften up our costs a little bit that we could pass along to our members. So as the first step of getting a new arrangement with Tri-State is to change their bylaws. 
Uh, their bylaws currently do not allow for a partial membership, uh, partial requirements membership status. Uh, so we've got to we've got to change that, and we've been working with other tri-state members as well as the staff over there to find some language that might be acceptable to everybody. And I'm happy to report that uh, that bylaw revision has passed at tri-state. And now we can move on to uh, negotiating a new contract with those folks that would hopefully allow us a little more flexibility in our generation mix, some more renewables, uh, would uh, give us some flexibility in pricing, which maybe would allow us to reduce our costs, and, and give us uh, more flexibility in terms of meeting the needs of our customers that you know, in particular want more renewables. This concludes our report of what has been going on since our last annual meeting. I really appreciate everybody uh, for being here and look forward to seeing you again next year. One more thing before we go, this year is a, a particular significance to United Power. It is our 80th anniversary since we were established. And it's been a great 80 years and John, I'm really looking forward to starting the next year's uh, working together with you. Well, James, we're going to have some fun, and we still got a lot of work to do, uh, but we're not slowing down. Come on outside, and I'll show you what I mean. All right. So, James, take a look at the license plate on that 1939 Chevy we drove up in. Now take a look at the license plate on that 2018 Tesla. What do you say we drive off in the future? Let's go, John. All right.